Hey. I don't know you. And you probably don't know me. And that's okay. I mean, as far as I can tell from things, we don't need to know each other. Not yet. Yeah. My name? Keiji Akashi. Why do you ask? Look out. No. Sorry. I just had a moment. I thought for a second I saw a volleyball going your way and it missed you, thankfully. Well, yes, I was gonna try and help you. Isn't it the normal thing to do? Help those people around you. I can't always let them try and solve everything on their own. Mostly on accounts that I have somebody that I have to dote for. If I didn't, things wouldn't go well for our team. Well, I say that like we're still a team. We're friends, but I still call us the team, even after we all graduated. It's different now. I don't think so much in volleyball as I do trying to find my own place. I've searched for most of my life, trying to figure out what it is that I really want. I usually found myself supporting, and yet here I am, unsure of how to face reality. Sorry, uh, strange for a stranger to get into so much details, right? It's a bad habit I've developed over time, mostly because I don't have all that much social interaction anymore. Me and Bokuto, it's been a bit different. Not that I, I'm on bad terms. Oh, sorry, you probably don't know Bokuto. Still, uh, he's my friend. I tried to keep up with everything, but everyone grew apart. It made me sad. My role of helping people, of setting them up to shine. It made me drawn to social work. And yet here I am, wondering if it was all just spur of the moment. If I could really do this and really help people. And you... You randomly met me at this bus stop in the rain. And what of it? Does any of this really matter? Is life real? Sometimes I wonder stupid things. I wonder it because deep down I can't find any reason to believe it's not. And then no reason against. Apathy. I'm not sure what to make of it. It's a bit of a difficult one for me. I wouldn't call myself sad exactly, but I'm just aimless right now. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. But by curiosity, why do you think that? So what you're saying is, you think I've got a lot of potential to help people, to make them better. Using my past to propel my future. That's pretty smart. You have a smile that reminds me of my favorite flower, but since I forgot its name, I guess I'll just call you my Blossom. If I'm allowed to do that. I know, we've only just met. Strange to call a stranger by a nickname, but I was hoping maybe because of that or some other reason. We can enjoy each other's company, or maybe meet here again. You said yourself you feel kind of lost. Maybe two lost people are better than one. And if we're really going to be lost, isn't it more fun if it's an adventure? I'm not sure what I'm doing with myself, but maybe, just maybe, together it won't seem so empty. Hmm. 
I think life isn't meant to be that way. We're meant to have friends and things outside of ourselves, but I never resonated with that. It was always an excuse for me. There was a close group that I felt a lot of connection. The rest didn't, and I guess you give me the same feeling as the team did. They're still my team. It's just now, as we're growing towards adulthood, it's different. I feel like sometimes I'm just empty. Not in a bad or good way. Just like there's not that much to me. Like I'm somehow just fading. Like I'm an empty glass of water. But would it really be a glass of water if it's empty? A drinking glass? Well, I don't have a good analogy. Clearly it's not my strong suit. But what is? Is my passion for it. I want to make you, or I should say people, especially those who I resonate with, happy. But sadly, the world doesn't have a place for me. I have to make my own. That's why I'm trying. I'm actually trying. How about you? Mm. I see. So you've not had an easy run of it either. You've known loss, you've known pain, the kind of colorful tales that would make a good book, but are terrible to live through. My heart goes out to you. I think empathy is one of the few things I'm gifted with, but sadly, it's a double-edged sword. Some days I feel like my empathy gets me in more trouble than it does help. It makes me feel sad that it happens. Sad that people see empathy as something negative, or in the first place, something that isn't worth their time. I want empathy and caring for one another to be more normal. And you know, a lot of times people get so caught up in numbers, they lose themselves. Luckily, I don't think I could ever be that kind of person. Numbers seem meaningless to me. An ironic statement considering what I was to the team. Holding it together like glue. Still doing so today. It's just, I don't view things like that. I did it out of empathy. Out of passion. Anything less, it just wouldn't be true. It wouldn't be me. And I absolutely hate that. The feeling of it being anything but honest. Anything but true. Mostly because my past history with dealing in liars. I know I'm going on and on about this, and you can leave whenever you want, but can I ask, did you at least enjoy our conversation so far? <laughs> that makes me smile. I can feel it. One of the things I've noticed people do the most is they'll fake a smile, but you didn't, and I'm thankful to you for that. You shouldn't fake a smile, not for anyone, least of all me, or those who are in touch with their empathy. It does a lot more hurt than good. So, where are you heading to on this bus? Oh, I see. Keeping a busy lifestyle, even now. I admire that. But make sure you don't overdo it, okay? Listen, Blossom. You could do a lot of things with your life, and I have no business telling you what's right or wrong, but as someone who's been through a lot too, don't give up. I know this may be meaningless coming from me, but I mean it. I'm not trying to be this devil's advocate of good things. I'm trying to follow what my heart tells me, and my heart tells me you're a good person and that you deserve better than what life has given you. Would you like to get coffee tomorrow with me? Mm. I was hoping you might say that. Listen, if it's not any different to you, here's my number. You can call me, and we'll meet at 7 tomorrow. 
How's that? I'd like that a lot. I see you're also prone to calling people nervous about the social encounter, huh? It's really no different for me. I was hoping you'd call, though I didn't know if you would or not. It's sort of like a wild card for me. This feeling, meeting someone new. Are you going to end up being someone I can trust? Or like the one that broke my trust? It's the risk of new social interactions. And as someone studying what I am, it's something I have to get over. So for risk of making myself look shameless, I have to admit to you something. Part of this is to learn. I wanted to put my teaching into reality. I wanted to meet someone and help them, but it's kind of funny. I feel like you've helped me more than I've helped you. That smile of yours, it's so honest. And I know you might fake it for others, but I'm grateful you didn't for me. You made it feel so true. And that makes me feel warm and happy. Listen, there may be a lot of things we don't know about each other. But I figured we could find out tomorrow unless you'd like today to be a preview of that. Maybe. I like you, Blossom. I hope that doesn't come across as invasive. I don't mean it that way. I mean... I don't know if I mean it that way yet. If I do, then maybe I don't even know it. Then again, some of the best things in life, they're mysteries, right? I want to uncover your mystery. Why don't you tell me more about you? <laughs> Playing coy, huh? I don't blame you. I'm almost a complete stranger. You might have heard of me. If you were following volleyball or other things, but you probably heard about Bokuto, not me. And that's fine if you did. He's a good guy. Stands out a lot. Was at the top of the country at one point. But that's not what I want to be known for. Not as underling, not as friend. I do want to be his friend, but I don't want that to define me. I want my own story. That's why I've been writing lately. I've been trying to make a book, chronicling the struggles, the passion, everything I learned in volleyball, translated into a different medium. It's something I'm passionate about. And stop me if I'm rambling, but you inspired a chapter today. I got home and I wrote and I wrote about the beautiful blossom encountered in the place of sadness. Well, you see... When we met, I'd just come from a funeral. Not anyone too close to me or anything. I'm not exactly sad, but it's hard to have a positive energy after being in that negative area. And for me, I needed something, a pick-me-up, anything to get my mind off it. So I tried talking to a random stranger, despite my social anxiety. And wouldn't you know it, pushing those boundaries, it, it went into a good way. Now trust me, maybe it's your looks or an air about you and aura, but you give off an aura that makes me feel comfortable. I can't put it into words, really, but I'm happy you do. It makes me feel safe and wonderful and like I'm free to say whatever I want. And you won't judge me. That's something that means a lot to me, you know. Because I'm kind of used to being judged lately. Well, I've been told a number of times to get a real job. That social work goes nowhere. And that writing is pointless. I know they mean well. They're strict. My parents said it. We're on kind of a rocky road when it comes to things like that. Even if people have good intentions, sometimes those pave the way to hell. 
and I'm trying to put all that passion I have into my writing. But sometimes it's difficult. It's not that easy to face yourself or your circumstances. The reality around you can be stifling, like someone, an invisible hand wrapping around your neck, strangling the life from you, making the brightness in your eyes fade, and that's what I feel happened to my parents. They lost themselves in the delusion of grandeur. They wanted something so bad they gave up their heart. They became greedy, selfish, closed off from the world, ready to leap and sink their fangs into anything they can get a hold of. And I'm not going to be like them. I'm not going to tell you that they're bad people because they're probably not. But even if they're not, they've made bad choices. And I'm trying to convey that. That's why I've made this book so far. And it's appropriately named Life versus Anxiety. Because I feel like I'm a byproduct of them. Of my circumstances. Of myself. Looking myself in the mirror and facing that. But at this point I'm sort of at a block after I finished your segment. And I was hoping somehow you could help me. You see, I want to write a story that changes people's lives. That makes them smile and brings them together like my team once was. I know I said we're still friends, but it's not in the same way. My team went different ways, so I've been a loner since. And I told you it's not easy for me to make friends. Between the social anxiety, between my apprehension, between getting hurt before between the occupation of fighting with my parents. There's so much which I don't feel like I have a chance to do, but when I was with you, I felt like that lifted. And I know it's not right to put all that on one person, but would you perhaps want to be a part of this? We could make something together. This book could legitimately change the world. That's what I'm aiming for. I always did get told to aim big. It's just, when I did aim big, they didn't understand the direction. They didn't consider it legitimate enough. So it was a loaded advice, I guess. But I'm still thankful. Even if their good intentions turned foul, I at least had a chance to pursue this. And that's why I think while I could hate them, well, I could hold it against the people who did me wrong. I don't want to be that kind of person. You know, I was reading books the other day, and I read one on the philosophy of forgiveness. And I know it's not easy. There's a lot of people in the world that I don't think deserve it. But I also don't think we deserve to hold on to it, you know. But, sorry, oh, this is embarrassing. I rambled on and on about that, but you liked it. Are you sure? I, I just gave you some of my passion there. I didn't even ask if you wanted it. I hope you enjoy it. I may not be the biggest speaker, but I'm passionate about what I love, and I'm passionate about people, making them happy, making them smile, and I've never met someone who shares that sentiment. Most people are all about take care of yourself first, then worry about others. And I get that. But until I can figure out the taking care of myself part, I want to at least do so much good for others. And I figure this book could be like a diary too. Taking out all those negatives and turning it into something positive, impactful, passionate. That's what would make me happy. Because that way, even if my book falls flat, those little few people who could read it, just knowing it's there, would be good enough for me. You... You know someone? You're friends with someone from a publishing company? That's... That's incredible. Are you sure you'd be able to 
Please don't feel like you have to do this. If anything, I'd be more than happy with your company and a cup of tea at the place. No, I'll pay. I just meant more like being able to sit there in such an environment. It just, it might help me get through this block. Oh, curious about that. Well, the block is that I don't know how to face myself when I'm not, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm in the psychiatrist chair. <laughs> no, in a good way. Trust me. Listen, what I'd say about this is... I... I've never been one who knows how to let go. When I hold on to things, they seem to resonate in my empathy that I mentioned was a double-edged sword. Sometimes the pain of the past, betrayal, people I've trusted, other things. I don't have some kind of storied background of things. It's little things, little betrayals, little distances, worrying about things that I shouldn't. Those things. I always hear stories about people with those storied pasts, and mine isn't. Really, mine is more like a, a story of averages, of a passionate man caught between his emotions and what he thinks best. Listen, I know what you're thinking. Why is this guy rambling on and on to an almost perfect stranger? And that's just it. I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> well, I'm glad you weren't wondering that. Gives me just a bit less social anxiety. You what? You fell in love with me at first sight. Is this some kind of joke? No, there couldn't be. I... I... Don't know what to say. I'm definitely not used to this. Excuse me for a moment. What do I do? What do I do? Ah, frick. I didn't mean it. Um, I, I, I can explain. No, I can't. I got a little nervous because I was literally about to tell you the same thing. I was going to tell you... It might be a stretch, but that th this chapter, I, I was going to read it to you about your beautiful eyes. And I, I know it's distracting of that, but it was about love, not, not about details. The other thing, this, the second thing I wrote was about you. I, I want to hold you, Blossom, in those candied arms. The skin as beautiful as silk. And the hand which I didn't get to hold. But how soft it must be. How wonderful. How I wish to hold it. How I want to kiss you. And understand what it means to feel love. The concept that every romance novel seems to touch on. Based on the fact that they're romance. You my hopeful experiment, my curious sentiment, no matter how much I tried to sleep through the night, to meet you tomorrow. So this I write, as stupid as can be, staring myself in the mirror, wondering what you see. Am I enough to charm you, Blossom? Am I someone worth your time? I'm not sure. I wish I could tell you. I wish I had that answer, but I don't yet. I don't have all the answers. That's just it. I want to search for them with you. <laughs> I know. You can make fun of it now if you want. You can laugh. <laughs> You're not laughing. That's shocking. It was just a little snippet 
I write down my feelings a lot lately. Mostly on accounts that I don't have another way of venting. So if I feel a certain way, if I'm angry or sad or happy or in love, I want it to be immortalized. I want that feeling of that moment to be captured, good or bad. That's why I've taken to writing so much. I don't just want to live in my own world. I want to live in the world of my words, too. And to hear that you also hold that sentiment. You think you love me, too. Are, are you sure this... If this was a joke, you, you could tell me. I, I, I'm sure I, I'd be fine. I, I just... I can't put into words how I feel right now. Happy, overwhelmed. I, I feel like tearing up. I, I'm glad. Nervous. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. What do you say to someone? That's your first love. When you have no context to go on, it's like a writer trying something they never have. It's exciting. It's, it's wonderful, but it's also terrifying. I want these words that I speak to you, this passion that I have, to mean something. I don't just want it to be something false, something of fiction. I want our book to be nonfiction. I want these tales to be of... Oh, I should shut up and tell you. Will you be my blossom? <laughs> then I'll be your... Um, it's a good thing for a blossom. I'll be your rainy day. Since we met on a rainy day, isn't that kind of romantic? Because when it rains... The blossoms get a drink. They get something to smile about. And even if it's not a sunny day, I just can't consider myself that. I feel like the sun is too proud and too vain, where the clouds are honest, earnest, and true to their name. They aren't trying to show off, but they still give love to the flowers. They give love to the blossoms. And they make the day, the life, come true. I, I, are, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay too. Just, my heart won't stop racing. I've never felt like this in my life. I never even thought I would. I, I, I'm happy. And also kind of... I can't calm down. It's like my heart is beating out of my chest. Like all these feelings are overwhelming and... I... Are you sure you're okay? It sounded like you... Um... You made a strange noise. I just wanted to make sure I didn't alienate you. Uh... That's good, I... I... understand. I hope that you can... I mean, that we, that we can... Look, words aren't working very well right now. It may be the only time in a long time I felt so at a loss. Mostly because... Well... Seeing a beautiful person on video call on the other end, I... Are you sure you're okay? You look like you have a fever and... Uh, please, don't push yourself. There's no reason for that. I promise. Even if we can't make tomorrow... We can make a date of it another day, or just call like this, and 
Do you want to know something funny? My team members, they always thought I'd be something analytical. They always took me for the man with the numbers and plans and everything. But when it really came down to it, that was only within volleyball. Outside of it, I had trouble with a lot of myself. I tried to be that in my normal life, but despite how I come across, it wasn't really me. I didn't hold on to those aspects. I didn't have that much to offer when it came just to myself. I can win a game, but that doesn't mean I can win a life. That's where people misunderstood me, and I think the expectations of my friendships and everything took a turn for the worst, and... Oh, well, what are you... What are you doing? Are you sure you're okay? You promise. Blossom. Please. You don't have to hide. I, I hope you're okay. <laughs> well, in any case, I'm glad that you're all right. And I'm all right, too. More than all right. I, I just met my first love. Had to have a passionate, beautiful conversation that you just so happened to feel the same on. A beautiful second meeting, and I can barely wait for tomorrow. I'm practically giddy with excitement. I didn't think I'd be this way, but I'm not going to beat around the bush. The fact that I get to be meeting someone as beautiful, as wonderful as you, I can think of nothing in the world. Uh, uh, you make me feel so much and I, I'm sorry if I stepped over boundaries I was calling you my my darling it wasn't meant to be taken the wrong way it's just in the heat of the moment I thought calling you my darling fit but Blossom also fits and I think if you called me something like honey or <laughs> rain cloud. <laughs> now I know you're the one for me. If for no other reason than you made me laugh. You're one of the few people in the world who can do that. That must be a talent. You can put it on your resume someday. <laughs> I'm happy that I don't feel like I'm going to lose anything anymore. I feel like this is a step in the right direction. And I feel like I might be able to finally finish my book. That I might be able to finally move forward in my life. And find things... That I love even more than all this. Like you. <laughs> I know it's too early to say I-L-Y. But I figured I might as well be honest. I feel like I do. And I guess we'll know in a few days. Or a few weeks. Or a few years. I wouldn't mind if this goes on forever. And if you're okay with it too, then let's make something out of it. Let's smile because we want to, not because we have to. Let's keep ourselves happy, fulfilled, in a place where we can feel safe in each other's arms. I know it may sound needy, but I want to know what it feels like to hold your hand, to kiss you, 
to stare into your eyes. So, what I suggest is that from here, we talk all night since obviously both of us are too excited to sleep. Then, we enjoy all that talking. And we talk all the way to the coffee shop for our day tomorrow. And then we talk all the time there. Talk on the way home. Get home and do it all over again. <laughs> you know, maybe we are helpless. But I don't mind that. Not at all. If it's with you, then count me into the hopeless gang. Because I'd gladly take that hopelessness and hope without you. You can't have blossoms without the rain or the other way around. <laughs> so, why don't we just talk about life, figure out our deepest, darkest secrets. Get it all out of the way. The hard questions right here, right now. Spill the beans. I once ate liver, and I didn't like it. Pretty deep, I know. No. <laughs> I was kidding. Probably my deepest, darkest secret is... I had trouble with things when I was little. I... I tried to hurt someone I shouldn't have. I took out my anger in bad ways. Taught a life lesson, but I'm not proud of it. I could have seriously hurt them. I'm just glad I didn't. How about you? <laughs> Don't worry. I accept all of you. And remember, you don't have to be there for a hug. To get the warmth, the feeling. It's just hugs are better in person. <laughs> Here, have a distance hug. <laughs> You're so cute and attractive. Don't forget that. <laughs> and I'm definitely falling in love with you, my darling.